Hello and welcome to One India. Joining me right now is the Irrigation, Food and Civil Supplies Minister of the State of Telangana, Mr. Uttam Kumaridi. Sir, first question of me, 10 months in. Uh, as an individual, if you had to analyze 10 months of your ruling, Meghala analyzed Chesteru and what were the hits and misses according to you? I think, uh, Akash, uh, we were sworn in on December 7th. 2023, it's yes. about eight months of rule, out of which uh, almost three months were under model code of conduct for uh, the parliament it. elections. Considering that we have had only five months of real uh, time for administration, I think uh, our present Congress government in Telangana, headed by Chief Minister Revant Redigaru, Deputy CM Bhattavikramar Garu and my all my cabinet colleagues, I think we have done a remarkable job. I mean, even if I am saying so myself. At the outset, I must say the, the biggest relief that the people of Telangana felt and voted for a change of KCR government was that basic democratic values were being trampled upon. Mm -hmm. Any form of morals and ethics in uh, and democratic traditions in uh, uh, in the KCR regime were you know discarded and totally brazenly ignored. The first thing people felt was a sense of relief, was a sense of freedom, was a sense of you know joyful freedom actually. I mean, under a Congress government, usually any in any state or in India also. People are more free, enjoy freedom more than than the present BJP government in Delhi or the erstwhile BRS government in uh, Telangana. That's one. That's a one big change. And whether it is the assembly or the media or the press or the executive, all the pillars of democracy have been further strengthened, and people have genuinely notice the change. Second, I think we have also done a, several historic steps in the few months that we are in power, whether it is the farmer's loan waiver or the free travel in RTC buses for women or the LPG cylinders at 500 rupees to everybody or the enhancement of the medical insurance to 10 lakhs Several such landmark steps taken by our present Congress government in Telangana have met with the people's approval. And uh, I think uh, generally the people of Telangana are very happy with us. Or I would at least say satisfied with our progress so far. So there have been multiple waves of headlines which have been speaking about the infighting within the ruling party in the state of Telangana. What are your comments on that without really getting into the nitty gritties of who's saying what, who's leveling what allegations? If you had to speak about, does infighting exist? Uh, or is the party one as well? Akash, I think uh, I must, I disagree with you that firstly, there is no waves of reporting of infighting in the Congress government in Telangana or the Congress party. This is basically some stray social media sponsored by the BRS and uh, on the whole, while we are not an autocratic dictatorial family rule like that BRS was, we are a democratic party, we are a democratic government, we are a transparent government. Hmm. I must say that uh, I am quite happy and satisfied and impressed that in these 10 months of uh, Congress government in Telangana, we have presented a united face on all the major issues. And uh, I think the public also perceives it as such. Sir, recently Hydra has taken the state by a storm, right? While some say it's political vendetta, the chief minister and the government have been very strongly putting their point forth that irrespective of who properties belong to, they will be broken on if they're illegal constructions. Uh, politically, how do you look at this? And secondly, what is your answer to the narratives being spun by the opposition at this point in time? See, I think this was a much needed initiative 
and I must compliment uh, the Chief Minister for the initiative he's taken in this regard because over the last decade, indiscriminate encroachment of all water bodies in the state or uh, there was a kind of a feeling of jiska lati uski bel. You have the, uh, you know, the political backing and the muzzle power and the money power. You could occupy, encroach any water body in the state leading to a chaotic situation. So, why I'm happy about the, uh, the, the Hydra initiative is that we need to protect our lakes and our water bodies and our water tanks and our Cherulu and everything. Because they had reached a very dangerous level. Uh, and uh, I am happy that uh, they have, uh, irrespective of political affiliations or status or stature of the people who have done this thing, uh, the Hydra has gone ahead with the demolitions. So, on that count, uh, I mean, I totally agree and commend the Chief Minister on this initiative. Sir, how do you look at the present political scenario in Telangana? While some say that BRS is down and possibly out, there are others who say it takes three terms for a regional party to be out of power to be counted as out. Uh, we will see a resurgence once again. BJP bagged eight MPs in the Lok Sabha elections. How do you see the present political scenario and who do you consider your principal opposition in the state at this point? See, uh, the present political scenario in Telangana, in my assessment, the Congress government and the Congress party have got further strengthened after the assembly and parliament elections. I mean, you can only see by the number of MLAs, MLCs and MPs joining our party voluntarily only because they like the way of the government. And uh, I had said this many times before the parliament elections and I was proven right when uh, what I said earlier that BRS would get zero seats and would slowly diminish and wither away. I think we are witnessing that phenomenon now. The BJP on the other hand, while they achieved a number of, a uh, significant number of seats in uh, Telangana, but they have no presence throughout the state. <coughs> they are limited largely to urban pockets and some pockets of Telangana, they don't have a presence uh, pan Telangana. So as of now, Congress government and uh, Congress party are poised well to consolidate, strengthen further. And I'm sure this local body elections are coming up shortly. The Congress party is going to sweep the local body elections. So there have been multiple allegations leveled by the ruling party as well as the opposition with respect to certain projects. Uh, some of the BRS leaders also went to the extent of calling you out personally and leveling certain allegations, naming certain projects, etc. Would you consider this mere political rhetoric or is there any merit to their arguments? If you're talking about irrigation projects? Yes. Okay, I must tell you, in 10 years of BRS regime, in most of the time, then CM KCR also irrigation minister. Yeah. In the first five years, Nevu Harish was the irrigation minister. I'm saying on record today, KCR and his family members and his family rule have destroyed, destroyed the irrigation and financial sectors of Telangana. They took over the state with a 70,000 crore public debt. And when they handed over to us in 60 years, the public outstanding public debt was 70,000 crores. In 60 years. In 10 years, the outstanding public debt rose to 7 lakh crores, 10 times. That's 10x of what it was. Of what was earlier. So one, they have drowned, or they have done their best to drown the Telangana people in debt. And... Uh, almost pushing Telangana into a dead trap. On the irrigation side, it's their corruption, their greed, their lack of planning, design, foresight, that they were doing more 
irrigation works more for the commissions that they were getting rather than for giving water to people. I'll give some figures. They have spent 1.81 lakh crores over 10 years on the irrigation sector and barely achieved any new eye cut. To give you some more figures, they spent more than a lakh of crores on Kaleshwaram project and could not generate even 1 lakh acres new eye cut for Kaleshwaram project. On the other hand, what project they built out of such a huge cost and all of it borrowed at a high cost loans, the project collapsed, they only built it, it collapsed in their time. You know, very rarely in independent India has a barrage collapsed like the way Medigata barrage collapsed. Yeah. And all inquiries are pointing out to poor design, poor construction, poor maintenance and total failure. Uh, I must also point out that Palamur Rangari project, they spent 27,500 crores, not a single acre of eye cut gen generated. They spent 8,000 crores on Sitaram uh, Sagar project, not an, a single acre of new eye cut generated. In this way, because of their, you know, almost quixotic ways, hmm. okay, almost like a Tughlaq uh, administration, do this today, do that tomorrow, do that day after. No design, no systems, no planning. And basically, they try to create a propaganda around it, but now it's all gone bust. Whereas we are doing irrigation in a very sincere, systematic and a planned way. And uh, Akash, whenever you want, in your free next time, I'll take you on the state. You will see a significant progress we are making. We have prioritized projects. We allocated sufficient budget, we are spending in the right way and we are going to generate in our five years of rule 30 to 35 lakh, 35 lakh acres of new eye cut for Telangana farmers. Sir, you just spoke about the state's debt. From 70,000 crores, it went up to 7 lakh crores. There's always, there's always a question when you speak about the state's debt, considering the fact that the Congress party in Telangana came to power on the back of a lot of promises that were made to the people of Telangana. Will it even be possible to deliver upon all of them? Because I think there's a long time to go. There's around four and a half, four years and two months left to go. Will it be possible to deliver upon all of those? And where does the state stand as on debt in terms of finances? See, it is, it is a fact that the KCR regime left the state indebted and Akash, the more significant point is their borrowing was short-term, high-cost loans. You know, they have borrowed from non-banking financial companies where the interest is as high as 11% and the loan has to be repaid in 5-6 years. They have uh, left the state finances in shambles. But I must say, uh, in all earnestness, that after our government has come, we are uh, looking constantly at ways to reduce the interest cost of the loans, how to convert, swap these loans to long-term, low-cost loans. We have increased the GDP, the uh, state revenues have increased. So I think we are on the right track and uh, we are going to do wonderfully well. Even eight months we have achieved in Telangana in terms of Promises that I think quite unheard of in either in Telangana or combined Andhra Pradesh also. Understood. Sir, it will be a disservice if I don't ask you, being a Congress veteran, if I don't ask you a question about the national perspective of the Congress party, right? Considering the recent Lok Sabha elections, where do you see the party going? We're hearing that the Congress might be in for good news in a couple of upcoming states. So, what is your opinion on the national picture? One, I think uh, the Lok Sabha elections where a slap on the face, the results, slap on the face of the BJP party and government in the centre because with the way they tried to suppress and oppress the opposition parties and particularly the Congress party, they seized the bank accounts and assets. They didn't, you know, they, they wanted to financially cripple the Congress party's election campaign. They jailed many, many opposition leaders. They used the central agencies to specifically target the uh, opposition leaders. But despite all that, a resurgent Congress doubled its tally in Lok Sabha. 
and i don't want to found, uh, sound uh, psychophantic but uh, i personally like and admire uh, rahul gandhi ji i have known him for many years personally also and uh, i think under his dynamic leadership under his very astute understanding of issues uh, the congress party is on the right track after parliament elections also it's another big boost that he has agreed to be the leader of opposition in lok sabha hmm. i think he is making uh, the bjp uh, government the bjp party in parliament cringe and uh, wail i think uh, they have never been so defensive in the parliament so both inside and parliament a resurgent congress is on its way to a total revival in the country and this is my personal belief and conviction that rahul gandhi will be the prime minister of the country in 2029 without any doubt and i'm pers- not withstanding my being a congressman or not or my being uh, an elected uh, legislator of the congress party i'm personally happy for the country that someone with a, a strength of character integrity a level of understanding and uh, very good leadership qualities like uh, rahul gandhi is going to become the prime minister i'm very sure he will become the prime minister in 29 sir uh, the last leg of my questions first one what is the way forward for telangana from here on because right now it's facing severe competition from other south indian states in the vicinity with respect to development uh, at all points telangana hyderabad bangalore and chennai are at loggerheads in terms of attracting uh-huh. investments so what is the way forward from here on are there any key sectors that you're focusing on with respect to this you know uh, i must tell you when the congress government delegation went to davos with uh, the chief minister and the it minister and the delegation they attracted investments of 40000 crores on record mou signed in the face of severe competition similarly in the recent visit of the cm and the it minister to the us they attracted investment of another 30000 crores i think we are on the right track and yes there is competition from other states and other cities but hyderabad has its own unique place in the country now and largely due to the secular tradition of hyderabad the cosmopolitan culture which is also largely due to decades of congress rule and the global infrastructure set up by the earlier congress governments whether the international airport or the outer ring road or the pvn sumaro expressway or the, uh, the uh, drinking water from krishna and godavari rivers or the metro rail all are congress government creations of earlier and uh, we have also announced several new initiatives now and uh, hyderabad is definitely the global destination for investments now i have no doubt about it and i am not saying this because i am a congress minister i genuinely believe that hyderabad is not competing with uh, chennai or bangalore hyderabad is competing with the global cities for uh, investment and for growth and i'm sure in our time we will make hyderabad a truly a global destination of investments sir my last question to you two statements made by two political leaders i'd obviously want you to respond on that you can obviously choose not to if you don't want to Uh, first is Mr. Karthi Chidambaram recently went on record to say there are only two parties in the country which are not run by one single family. One is the BJP, and the other one is the Communist wings, right? What is your opinion? I mean, in as many words, he said that even the Congress is run by one particular family. See, Gandhi family is is a necessity, is a requirement for the Congress party to be is a glue which holds the Congress party together. without them the congress party would splinter and they have proved very capable very selfless very uh, you know people centric leadership uh, i personally also admire them uh, for the qualities and for the for the sacrifice they made for this country and i have no doubt that rahul gandhi will be the prime minister in 2029 and we will all work to in the direction whatever else karthi said is not relevant to me second part of the question two statements pertaining to telangana uh, 
Recently, you spoke about the investments that were brought in by the Chief Minister during his visit. There were two counter narratives that came out of that trip. One was the Congress coming out and outrightly defending and saying, what's harm in doing business with anybody who wants to pump in money into Telangana? We are not doing them any favors, rather they are investing into Telangana. So whoever be the person, it doesn't matter. There's another counter narrative and your opposition party has gone up to Delhi to file a complaint saying it is people within the close family of the chief minister who are getting benefited out of getting investments. Whereas I, I feel there is a lacuna in their logic because here the government didn't offer anything to that entity, rather the entity offered 1000 CR to be invested into the state. What is your response to that? No, I find that uh, criticism of uh, CM's brother investing in the state, I think for an ethanol project, if I'm not mistaken, I, I'm not. Uh, but whatever it is, it is investment coming to the state. And uh, by being a CM's brother, it doesn't bar him from investing. And instead of welcoming it, what I mean, I find no merit in what the BRS party or the their leaders are saying. What is wrong if somebody is related to uh, chief minister invests in the state? I don't find anything wrong in it. And uh, I think their uh, criticism lacks any merit or logic or any rashtra in it. Sir, lastly, recently one of the MLAs in Telangana went on to say that one fine day you could be a chief minister. What is your take on that? It's a, you know off-the-cuff remark uh, by a colleague, it doesn't have any political significance. Uh, it was just <laughs> as in a matter of addressing the people on the dais. By mistakenly, he said that. And then anyway, uh, we, you know, I, I can only say this much. The present Congress government in Telangana is stable, united. We are working together and we will take Telangana uh, forward in a, in a dynamic way. Thank you so much for speaking to us and giving us your time. So thank you so much. Thank you.